So welcome back to Labour Party Conference. Got the delight to have our president, Karen Rose. How are you doing, Karen? I'm doing okay, thanks, Chris. So you've just smashed it at the Rostrum. So we went out live on the BBC, uh, got a massive ovation from the conference. Obviously speaking primarily about the BT Group dispute uh, and raising the issues of our members. We just chatted to Dave uh, about doing the same on the Royal Mail Group dispute and how important it is that you know, when we're here at events like this, we're always the core of what we're doing is making sure we're representing our members in the workplace. Um, the conference seems to be right beyond our BT and Open Reach members. Oh, definitely. Absolutely, we have to take the opportunity when there is events like this to make sure that we're raising the awareness of the disputes that we're in and making sure that everybody understands the content of the discourse and the reason why we're in dispute with the company. You know, so yeah, we took the opportunity on that motion, um, which, which really was to highlight how the profiteering is going on with big, massive profits going to shareholders and the workers just not getting their fair share, and that's exactly where we are in BT. You know, BT and Open Reach members, they have not had the just reward for the money that they need. One of the things that uh, has struck me has been um, from your speech, but also for people who've been coming here to the CW store. There are lots of people obviously talking about the posties and Walmart, but loads of people as well talking about just coming and saying they've been to BT and Open Reach yes. lines this morning. So, I mean, you know, obviously, this is the Labour Party conference, and you know, we're going to get a, a higher proportion of support from these people as the public generally, anyway. But it does seem to me that, like, there, there's a feeling here that people have had enough, and like, not just our members, but you know, the rail workers, the nurses. Uh, teachers, all of them in dispute that the country seems to be moving behind people who are saying enough is enough, as you said in your speech. Yeah, no, that's right. And I think, look, on all of those motions this morning, when we heard people from other unions, really, although we were focusing on the specifics, which was about our own members and about the disputes that we've got with the various different companies where we've got representation, the, what the overwhelming message is, is really working people deserve more. They deserve better, right? The group need to pay that, basically, is really that overwhelming message that's coming across. Because what's happening in the UK economy at the moment is that big profits are going to private shareholders. People like the CEO of the company, but also big corporate shareholders. And they're getting a massive share of the profits the company are making on the backs of the workers, who are the ones who are interacting in order to create those profits. And the workers are just not even getting cost of living payments, right, which loads of these companies can actually afford. And that is an overwhelming message here. And particularly in the public sector as well, they've been talking about the health services, the nurses, doctors, all of those people, you know, all of those people have got us through the pandemic, all of those key workers, including our workers in our mail and our workers in IT, all of them, right? They're not getting what they deserve and what they've earned, you know. And so I think that the overwhelming message that's coming out from this conference, particularly from the unions, is workers deserve more, they deserve a better pay rise, people shouldn't have to choose between putting the left, putting the heating on and whether they can eat. And you know, I just heard stories this morning, I was just talking to somebody from actually my local area in South Wales and she was telling me about a video that she'd seen, actually not in relation to Wales but in relation to somewhere in England, where a child was going into the school with a lunchbox right, and pretending to eat out of an empty lunchbox because they didn't want the other children to know that they didn't have any food. And that is absolutely a horror story. That should not be happening in a country like the UK. It shouldn't happen in anywhere. No, it definitely shouldn't happen in a country that is as wealthy as ours. The problem is the wealth is going far too much towards the top end and not enough of it's going to the workers. Spot on, One of the things um, on, on the BT and Open Rich dispute, totally understandably, the members are saying is, look, you know, uh, we appreciate the unions doing everything it can. We understand what you're facing, but you know we want more media coverage. We want more coverage from the union on what we're doing. So you know, stuff like today is a great opportunity to take. You, you know you, your speech taken by the BBC. We're here doing this now. You know making sure it goes out on all of our channels. I uh, just want to, I suppose, you give you the opportunity to reassure the members that in the leading for the strike, alongside the stuff that you and in Dave set out around shareholders' work, alongside the yeah. political work that we are going to be doing everything we can in the next coming days and weeks to make sure that their cause is raised as highly as possible. Absolutely. And look, we always have. We have always done everything in our power to make sure that their dispute is raised and, and that it's given the profile that they deserve. I think there is a difficulty, right? It's a little bit of a, a difficult thing because the problem is, even though we all know and the members all know how much the country relies on them, 
how much connectivity mm. is linked to everything we do, whether that's public services, whether it's emergency services, whether it's just having your broadband at home, whether it's streaming your sport, films, all of those things. That's what our members run. And the problem is that because a lot of that is automated, actually, it only becomes obvious that they're needed, right? Even though they're running those systems in the background all the time, it only becomes obvious that they're needed when something goes wrong. And so it doesn't hit the public in the same way as your post not being delivered on a daily basis. But we are doing absolutely everything we can to make sure that we raise the profile of that dispute, to make sure that we get into the media. And as you said, opportunities like this that's going to be streamed by the BBC or filmed by the BBC today, absolutely, I was all, never going to miss that opportunity to talk about the BT dispute in that speech. Thank you. Well, uh, just one more question then, give me a chance to stop. Is, um, obviously, the media is important, politicians important, you know, what we're going to do with sharers is important, but ultimately, disputes will be won by our members' support for the union and coming out on strike days because we've seen, and we, you know, you, you know, obviously, you know better than anyone with Andy that the, the senior managers that are saying, like, yeah, this is having an impact. And we've seen the call backlogs, we've seen the, the maintenance backlogs, etc. And we know it is having an impact. Just how important is it that, you know, heading to the next four days industrial action, that every single member of BT and Open Reach joins the profit line and withdraw their labour? How important is it in terms of winning the, the, the pay deal that our members deserve yeah. that to do that, they've got to take the strike action that we've called? We have got to take strike action, right? We didn't call the, the next four days strike action like because we know, we have, we have made a promise, a commitment from the beginning, that we, whatever we would do would be to make sure that it is minimum pain for members and maximum pain for the company. And we know that we've, you know, we've had a little bit of feedback where people, some people believe that it's not the best way to do it, but look, we took the feedback and what we decided to do on these strike days was to have the Thursday and the Monday because actually there's no room for recovery between the Thursday and the Monday and it actually does mean that it does hit the company. Okay? So we know there's people out there that don't necessarily agree with what uh, with the strike days will be called, but we genuinely believe that at the moment that is the best way to hit the company. But it is clearly very vital that the members support that action. And look, the feedback that we get from the members at the moment oh, yeah, is that they are supporting that action and that you know that they will come out on strike. And we we don't want to make it any more painful for them than we have to. But we have got to up the ante now. We have got to up the ante because that is what will deliver the leverage, the pressure in order for us to get what they deserve, what you, what all of our members deserve out of this dispute. Well, okay, and final message if you want to give it to our members, anything you want to wrap up with saying? I just want to say to the members, look, stay with it, keep solid, really? support the strikes and we will win this dispute.